Welcome back to Let's Play Sin and Punishment Star Successor. This is the third stage, known as Stage 2, the Undersea Tunnel. A tunnel in the ocean? Yep. Turns out we were shot down over Fukuoka, Japan. There's a service tunnel here that should be free of enemies. Once we make it through, we'll infiltrate a floating air fortress. According to the database, a few ships are docked there. If we can get to one of those ships, we'll be home free. And you're sure there are no enemies down here? Positive! Why would enemies hang out in a water tunnel? Finally, there's the entrance. Of course, Issa's theory on there being no enemies will be immediately proven wrong, as you can see out in the distance there. Now, Stage 2 started off primarily with enemies that couldn't do you any harm, but uh, this level is not the same at all. The multi-pronged sea creatures can fire purple bolts at you, and if you don't destroy the large bulbous sacks, they drop these parachute guys onto the screen that can roll up into a torpedo shape and launch themselves at you. Uh, you can shoot them normally while they're open, but once they conceal their weak spot, the only way to get rid of them is with a slash. And unfortunately, you can't actually bat them back as projectiles, which kind of sucks. Next up are some generic boats. Uh, you can take the first one off the screen as soon as it gets there, but the other two you'll have to wait for some torpedoes. And unfortunately, even after you destroy them, the last few torpedoes they fired are still there, so be careful to uh, slice them and don't get hit. Now the first achievement in this stage is unlocked by destroying those large Taurus things in the background. They're kind of uh, explosive containers. Like many things that you shoot in the background, they'll explode and anything near them will get hurt and or killed. There are about seven in total, and they're great for taking out these surfer dudes. This stage has a lot of you know, really cool set pieces and uh, just general visual designs. The idea of kind of a Stargate-ish tunnel through the ocean that you can surf on the inside of is pretty great. Of course, these guys are mainly chumps, but it's fun to knock them down off the top of the water tunnel. They just kind of fall out of the uh, thing into the ocean. And there is the last container, which gives us our metal. Now this is one of the coolest things in the entire stage. Just kind of blasting out of the tunnel for a second and then flying back into it, and the best part of it is that you can still shoot enemies inside, even though you can't see them. This section with the moray eels that uh, reach in to try to eat you actually isn't as hard as it might look. Uh, the game slows down and gives you ample time to respond to them. It's not like a quick time event where it's press X or die, whoops, you're dead. You get at least one or two seconds to think about it. And even if they do hit you, it's only about 10 damage. Now we can pick up another metal, and this one's actually pretty tough, by destroying this eel and the eel that comes after it. This is another one of those things much like the blue ships at the start of the previous stage, where they're an important part of the challenge here, so they respawn behind you while you're not looking. So this guy is going to cut in and out of the tunnel as we go by, and he's actually kind of tough to dodge. And the tricky thing about destroying him is that we have to hit his head to do so. Fortunately, the missiles that are fired by those surfer dudes can be hit back, and we can still target the head. And the combination of these things results in a bunch of homing missiles aimed at the eel's head, 
that little, well, that eventually destroyed it and granted us the medal. Alright, you might notice we haven't had a boss fight yet, but uh, that'll all soon change. Beforehand, though, there are a few more surfer dudes that gotta go. Now, I've read conflicting reports on this, but the general consensus seems to be that if you can get all of these coins, then that also gives you a medal. But I've never done it, and there are conflicting reports that say that even if you do do it, you still don't get the medal. So maybe it might be like a Japanese version thing that was changed, who knows. There's a lot of things that people still don't know about this game. Alright, so all of these school of fish are here to help us get our multiplier up in preparation for a boss. And here it is. This is the Medusa Keeper. Its weak spot is fairly obvious, and it kind of reminds me of a, a Star Fox boss. The one from, uh, I think it was Sector 6 in Star Fox 64. And he introduces something that's going to be a uh, mainstay of the bosses in this particular stage, and that is energy rings with stuff in the middle. In this case, it's explosives that you can bat back at him, though you'll need to lock on to make sure that the explosives go to him and not directly into the explosive from the next ring he fires. Now, at this point, we are technically right up next to the Medusa Keeper, so I could just sit there and slash him, but I want to be careful and not slash willy-nilly, because there is an achievement to be had by destroying all six of the legs simultaneously. And for that, I considered it worth taking a hit, even though it's probably not. With that out of the way, we can just finish off the Medusa Keeper. Luckily, it's sitting here doing its explosive maneuver over and over again, giving us plenty of things to hit back. Alright, on to the second half of the stage. Now we're going to go really deep down into the ocean. So you see those crabs walking around down there? They will uh, spit out bubbles that will, left unattended, reduce the amount of screen that you can be on. However, it turns out that they are in fact explosive projectiles and can be hit back at the many enemies to be found as we delve deeper and deeper into the ocean. I can only imagine if Bubble Crab for Mega Man X2 had actual explosive bubbles instead of those, you know, lame ones. Maybe it'd be good against things other than Flamestack. The one thing you want to be careful of, though, is not to destroy the crabs. Otherwise, you'll, your uh, stream of projectiles will be restricted, or non-existent, if you kill too many of them. Alright, so, we've destroyed a bunch of more AILs, we've got our multiplier all the way up, we've got a medal for reaching 500 kills, we'll get another at 1,000. So, I'm thinking it's just about time for another boss. And Treasure agrees. First, we're going to blow up a little more stuff. Also, crabs everywhere. Oh god. Yeah, not knowing about being able to destroy the bubbles is a real pain in this part, because the crabs, you aren't going to kill them with your regular shot. They're too strong. So you charge up, kill a bunch of them, and then all of the rest of the crabs would appear and the screen would fill with bubbles, and you'd be like, oh god, what's happening? 
But at that point, if you haven't learned that you can bat the bubbles back, then you're probably just not going to succeed at this stage. Or especially not this boss, the Moray Keeper. The real key here to just completely brutalizing this boss is to keep knocking the bubbles back at it. They come in from off screen, and there's just enough in a delay of a delay in the attacks from the various mores. There are two fake and one real. The real one's obviously the yellow one because it's different. But uh, they all, you know, get together in the same spot, and there are a lot of projectiles to bat back that make big explosions. So you can just completely destroy that boss. There's also a very strange medal to be gotten here by destroying these uh, walls. I'm not really sure what made them decide that that was worth 200,000 points, but they did. Achievement unlocked, I guess. Now, as hard as I may try to destroy these four ships, they'll keep coming from behind because they're a necessary part of this next set of the state section of the stage, where they will drop these red laser motion sensors that, when you get too close to them, create a uh, depth charge across the way. By destroying at least 20 of them, another achievement is granted. But it also makes the stage kind of boring. So now that I've got the metal, I'll just let the rest of them go and dodge them. Honestly, not that difficult. But if you're doing it for the entire section of that run, what's going to happen is you're going to get tired of dodging them and screw up. Alright, time for more bosses. Uh, this is a three-part boss. And the first part, I actually really like. I'm a big fan of the energy bar that moves across the screen back and forth and changes sizes. Anything that basically requires you to do the dodge through it and to pay attention is something that I think is generally pretty cool. We'll see more bosses like that in the future, where... Uh, the energy bar itself may be joined by other projectiles who are even more dodging fun. And really, that's one of the things that's the most fun about this game, is dodging around and avoiding hails of bullets and lasers and all sorts of craziness. Allegedly, you get a medal for destroying a hundred of those turrets that keep regenerating, uh, but I don't have time for that. So I'll destroy a bunch of them, because I do want to get my multiplier up. But uh, definitely not waiting around for a hundred of them. Also, those hails of bullets from uh, the machine guns on the side, they can be a real pain to avoid. But keep in mind that even if it looks like you might dodge into them and not be able to move aside fast enough, you can still cut a hole in them with your melee attack. Alright, time for the final form, and I like this one as well. This is a, uh, I call it a Spotlight of Death boss. This mechanic appears a few times throughout the game, where spotlights will appear on the screen, and you'll have a certain amount of time to avoid them before lasers are projected to that point. And the thing that screws, well, that uh, makes it harder to deal with in this case, is that there are also those two rotating lasers around the edge of the screen so you can't just avoid them easily and what the boss tries to do is trap you so that you have to get hit by one or the other. In practice though uh, small precise movements are the best for avoiding the spotlights and there will generally as long as you juke them out a bit always be a space for you to go to when the actual lasers are emitted so you can avoid damage easily. I just screwed it up uh, right at the end which kind of sucks. But you know what? That's still not enough bosses, so how about another three-part boss? This is the Brimstone, and the, uh, the first two phases of the fight actually don't get their own health bars. There are two batteries of guns here. There's the ones that are just kind of machine guns and the ones that fire those electric spheres, which are uh, missiles that you can bat back at it. And once you clear out all the guns, you'll go to phase two of the fight. 
it's actually not that difficult at all. And uh, you actually do have full range of movement around the brimstone, but that doesn't really make a whole lot of difference in this first stage, unless you want to make it all the way over to wherever it's shooting the energy balls. The second phase, I actually really like. Uh, it creates kind of a maze of fire for you to navigate with the flamethrowers. And uh, while they are really easy to dodge, there is a medal to be had by making it all the way over to the boss and meleeing all of the cannons here. You take a lot of damage and lose a lot of your multiplier, but it is very satisfying to just hack up the flamethrowers. Now this is what the game considers the true boss. There is also an achievement to be had here, and you get it by going to each of these platforms and uh, smacking the landmines there, back at the boss. The thing is, it doesn't have a lot of life though, so you kind of have to waste some time and waste a lot of projectiles if you want to hit them all. In general, that laser ring attack is pretty easy to avoid, you just need to dodge up and down with, you know, good timing. But I'm a little distracted by making sure that I get to all of the uh, things that need to be hit, which is just an absolute pain sometimes. That's why I think a lot of people try to avoid some of the more stringent medals to get, especially ones that would put you in harm's way a lot. So like the, the fire maze one, the previous one, a lot of people just won't get that or bother with this one and just kill the boss as fast as they can without getting hit, because the extra 200,000 points frequently aren't worth it. And in this case, I think they're definitely not worth it. I just want to show it off. And there we go. One charge shot later. And we're almost done with the level, but uh, of course there's going to be another boss. You know who hasn't shown up yet? Is the Nebulox. And I'm sure they'll have something to say about our plan. So I was wrong about the tunnel. How'd they know we'd use it? And then this machine attacks us? Something's fishy. You know, I bet the Nebulox are behind this. Yeah. Hey, Isa, do you know why they're hunting me? Is it because I don't belong here? Sort of. I think it's because you're not a real human. Hmm. What is human? Humanity is hard to define, but we have a head with two ears and two eyes. And a nose and a mouth? Yep. And a body with two arms? That's right. And two legs, right? Uh-huh. Oh, and a tail. Sure. We don't have tails. <laughs> oh, how cute. <laughs> Look at you, giggling with the target you were sent here to kill. Tell me, my friend, why haven't you completed your task? Because I changed my mind. So, you defy the will of the Creator. I don't give a damn about the Creators or their will. Letting that creature live could destroy our entire universe. End her life. Turn your gun on that demon. <laughs> you missed me.
was some stunt you pulled back there. But resistance will only delay the inevitable. I see you've made your choice. Unfortunately, I can't very well return to command empty-handed. Come now. Allow me to show you the true meaning of pain. Alright, time to take on Armin Ritter, the next member of the Nebula. We can heal up by destroying these buoys. But we can't actually harm Ritter yet. Alright, so his deal is that he is a shapeshifter. However, the only forms he can take are uh, various forms of sea life. So, first up is the manta ray form. The terrible bulbous manta ray form. With all the blobs being generated by it. You definitely want to take out the blobs because some of them, which are clearly marked, uh, can turn into machine guns. Others turn into planes, which fire missiles. And some just get in your way, which is most of the silver ones. They do count towards your uh, kill count for the stage, though, so you do want to blow up a lot of them. After all, getting to a thousand is the goal. This attack is kind of hard to avoid, because even as you keep uh, the purple whip blazers off of you, he can still spawn those golden globules that fire machine guns at you. Also, it can be kind of tough to avoid you know, the ceiling lasers as well, especially when it gets to this part. But with that attack pattern outlasted, Ritter becomes far easier. His final attack is... just a regular red laser that he uses to dissect the screen. It doesn't even stay on screen long enough to be a real threat. It's just kind of annoying. It does hurt like hell if you get hit by it, though. But you probably aren't going to. Well, with his fake form revealed, Ritter is split into a bunch of globules. Every one you destroy is 10 off of his life. Or off of his true life, which is just a thousand. However, he will heal back up to a certain point between each form, no matter how far you get that form down. Unless you were to somehow destroy all of them at once, uh, in which case I guess you'd win right there, but I've never succeeded at it. Form 2 is a seahorse. Now this time, his weak spot is that glowing thing in the chest, which you can tell because he immediately puts up a shield to guard it. You have to be careful with your charge shots in this form. You generally want to save them for lowering the shield, because otherwise it'll take forever. Alright, his second attack is what I call the Jez Ball attack, if you remember that old Windows game. This I consider to be... I mean, it's. I think it's fairly easy to dodge, but I can see how it would be kind of big trouble. The key is to keep moving and never to stay on one side. You always want to be moving towards wherever the lasers aren't going to be. Come to think of it, that's John Madden level advice. Play the shmup by avoiding the lasers. Good job. I actually like this attack with the rotating, uh, rotating death rays, I guess it would be. You can dodge through them, which is helpful for when he tries to cut off your movement with those gravity bombs. And after he's finished with that, he goes on to his last attack pattern which is this. You don't want to get caught in the walls of water. That's no good and will hurt. And you want to make sure you keep locking onto him so that you can knock these missiles back at him. Overall though, unless you get caught in the walls, this is a really easy form to deal with. Much like the uh, red laser from the manta ray form. Alright. So as you can see, he went back up to 700 health. That was his new max after the first form. And uh, the time you get to destroy the globs is shorter as the forms progress. But he actually only has this one more form. 
which is a dolphin. And the dolphin also has a lot less life than the rest of the forms. If you don't finish off all of the globs here, or after this form, the boss will actually time out. As far as I know, it's the only boss that can time out. It'll count as beating the level, uh, but you won't get a boss bonus for it. This first attack is actually avoided by going through the blue rings. As the blue rings pass, they expand and fill the entire screen. As the red rings pass, they close in on whatever went through them. So avoid the red rings, go through all the blue rings. It's kind of tricky to avoid, it's, or rather, it's really easy to dodge into this next attack. Because you don't know ahead of time where the death charges are going to be coming from. Because they're getting juggled about. And they can go from anywhere to really anywhere. Alright, and this is the final attack pattern for the dolphin form. The fakes go up. They create a hole for you to dodge into. And then you have to get out of it before the true dolphin surfaces. And with that, we can finish getting our thousand. And just barely failed to actually defeat Ritter. As far as I know, that's the only stage that this can happen on. Everything else either repeats its attack patterns over and over again until someone is dead, or has a special move. Uh, impressive. You're much more powerful than I thought. Isa, we've established a base at the planet's energy hub. A mountain in Japan that towers above all else. Escape is impossible. Bring us her head when you realize that. A mountain in Japan? Mount Fuji? Isa! Just a little farther to the air fortress. Let's head out. Next time, Gradius Castle in the Sky.